Do the chemicals and plastics in your food packaging, your water bottles and your cosmetics cause infertility? Well, many researchers believe that they do. So it's an interesting phenomenon. If we look back at the period between 1973 and 2011, many, many studies have shown that there is, for example, a 50 to 60 percent decline in sperm concentration in men. Also, we've seen over this over the last 50 to 60 years that fertility rate as in general has declined. It is today more difficult for couples to conceive a child than it was 50, 60 years ago. And that was all the modern medical advances that we've had. So early on, the researchers became interested in what well, is there a connection between environmental exposure to things like plastics. And they found through studies, and we did a lot of studies in rodents and in other uh, animals, that yes, I mean, there is a direct connection. If we give them plastics, um, especially if we expose them to these phthalates or, or bisphenols, there is a decrease in their fertility, you know, that could be measured. Um, and so that's something that uh, people like Shanna uh, Swan, she's a PhD in environmental and rep reproductive epidemiologist, that's a long title. And um, she wrote a book about it and, you know, she did a lot of studies and she published and she's a very interesting person. So I looked at some of her publications and found that's actually pretty fascinating. Um, so she not only concerned herself with, well, what's the impact on, on us as fully grown people? And that's one thing. And that's, again, we can say, well, it will certainly impact our fertility rate. But she also looked at, well, what's more concerning is what happens in a developing baby. That means if the mother, the pregnant mother is exposed to these phthalates uh, um, specifically, and is there a problem with the development or the formation of uh, the developing baby? And she found that, yes, there are differences as, as these babies are born. So for both men and, and for women, for, for male and female babies, they saw um, that the reproductive organs didn't develop quite as well as in mothers that were not exposed to so, many, so much phthalates. So there's a direct correlation. And that is a very scary thing. And, you know, it should be sort of a category X warning. We have that for medications, you know. So category X means, well, don't give it all in pregnancy, toxic in pregnancy. And, we don't hear anybody say that. Um, and part of the reason is everything has plastic. It's hard to escape this. So, you know, you might go out and get yourself a BPA free bottle, but guess what? They take the BPA out, fine, they don't use that. Then they use BPS and that might be even worse. BPA is just one of the chemicals that we studied early on and we knew that it was damaging. And the industry right away said, well, let's just take that out and market it that it doesn't have that, fine. But again, you still have a bunch of other chemicals, many others. And I always equate it to um, cigarettes, you know, when they came out with filters for cigarettes. Oh, it takes out the tar of the cigarette. Fantastic, great. That's one out of a thousand things that are carcinogenic and bad for us that's out now. It's still bad to do, right? So same thing with plastics. So just taking the BPA out doesn't do it. Um, and also it becomes worse when you heat it. So um, when you think of even, you know, things we do on an everyday basis, let's say you go to Starbucks and you get yourself a coffee. Well, it comes in a paper cup. I feel pretty good about that. But Guess what? There's a lining in there. Why is there a lining in the paper cup? Because if it was real paper or cardboard, of course, it would soak through and your coffee wouldn't be where you want it to be in your cup, right? So they line it with a, with a plastic. So that's not good. Um, canned foods, another good example. So the cans used to be really out of metal. And then we had a lot of cases of botulism when there was rust and, you know, or a dent in there and, you know, that outer coating would, would crack a little bit and you had problems. We don't have that today. There's no botulism anymore because they line it with plastic. So now you have food that's probably as it gets made before it gets put in the can is very hot. And remember, heat actually really, really leaches out more of these chemicals into your food, right? So now you have this hot food going in the can, the can's lined with plastic. So you get even more of those phthalates in there. So we're exposing ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis with this. And it's really frustrating because it is in literally everything. It is very hard to escape. But I think there's some ways we can um, change things in a positive trajectory and minimize the exposure. Because again, it's, it can be overwhelming if we want to analyze every little thing we get exposed to, but I think there's certain things we can do um, to have some positive influence and some changes. And one thing I would say for sure, if someone is uh, planning to conceive or if a woman has become pregnant, then be even more diligent about it. Because there we know for the developing child, it's a big um, risk to be exposed to these phthalates. And also, for the purpose of conception, fertility wise, you know, you want to write, I mean, for a long period before you even get to that point, decrease plastics in your diet because you want to kind of decrease the toxins in your body to obviously increase uh, the chance of that. Anyway, so 
when we look at what can we do, um, some of the ways we can handle it, of course, is cutting out plastic bottles. So don't drink water out of plastic bottles. Don't drink anything out of something that is especially heated when, and contains plastic. And that unfortunately includes all those coffee cups and espresso cups at, at, at Starbucks and all these vendors. So I wouldn't, wouldn't use those. Glass is great. So when you make your own coffee at home, you can use glass or ceramic. That's always fine. There's no problem with that, right? For water, if, you, if you're on the go, you can use stainless steel or even glass bottles. I have glass bottles. If I have a protein shake, I put it in, the, in, a, in a glass bottle. And they usually have like a sleeve made from some silicone. So if you drop it a little bit, it usually doesn't, doesn't crack easily. So those are some ways we can do. Tupperware, again, not great because we tend to heat up things in Tupperware. So always make sure your Tupperware is made from glass. And the lid, you know, yeah, if that's not glass, that's usually okay because there's no direct contact of the food with it, right? When you go to the supermarket, so buy things that are in glass, peanut butter in a glass. And also peanut butter is an interesting one. It usually the one that's, uh, it's usually in plastic uh, 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 bottles, which I don't recommend at all. And especially oily or fatty things. It seems like they found in, in some studies that if there's a, a fat on oil, like with, like with dairy or with fats or with meats, they extract those phthalates even more from the plastic, right? So fat, when you think about it, plastics are made from oil, right? And in organic chemistry, the one thing I remember from undergrad was like dissolves like. That's, you know, one thing I remember. And then in medical school, we didn't really even talk about that anymore. But that means that, you know, you have a plastic made from oil and you put oil inside. So they kind of like to, you know, almost dissolve each other, but they interact really well with each other. So things can leak easier into there. That's the point that they kind of showed with some of these studies. So make sure if it's peanut butter, for sure in a glass. And, you know, if they don't put a hydrogenated oil as a stabilizer, which you, you don't want that hydrogenated oil in there, then you would see a little bit of oil on the top. And the ingredient should just say peanut butter and salt, and that's it, and you're good. Um, coconut oil. And coconut oil is a great one for, for two reasons. I always recommend for cooking, and if you see some of my other videos, I always talk about it. Coconut oil is one of the oils that I recommend. And um, you can always get it in a, in a glass. Again, don't get that in a plastic container. The nice thing is you get one coconut in a glass for cooking for your kitchen. No phthalates because it's glass. And the other one you put in your bathroom. And we use that for a whole family as a, as a body lotion after you shower. Just simple coconut oil in a glass. And uh, it's a great moisturizer. And when you look at all these other lotions, they have a ton of ingredients. If you can't pronounce them, you probably shouldn't put it on your skin and you shouldn't eat it. That's a very good general rule. So if it's hard, too hard to pronounce, just forget about it. Now, when I get a jar of coconut oil in, in a glass jar, it says ingredients, coconut oil, then, then you're good. Then you know what's in it, right? So that's another way to do it. Um, in terms of traveling and all that, again, uh, taking water with you, stainless steel is, I think, the best option. Um, and the main thing is, again, remembering that anything that gets heated. So if you go to a restaurant and, it, you know, if it's like more of like a fast food place and they serve it in, in plastic dishes, I really wouldn't, you know, soup in plastic containers and all that hot dishes on plastic plates, I, I probably would say that's not a good idea. Because again, a lot of these chemicals, these phthalates and, and you know, the, the BPA and BPS, whatever they put in there, leaches in your food and then you consume it. And while we get rid of a lot of it through the urine again, how much of it ultimately gets stored in our body and in our fat, that's really, really hard to determine. But you can always be sure not all of it gets out right away. Some of it will at least for some time get stored. And it can cause a lot of uh, problems in your, in your body, of course. I'm going to link a study to this video. I don't usually do it because, again, this channel is about be giving very simplified, concise um, advice for your health. And I think, you know, some of the studies, they can get very comfortable. There was a good one, though, in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health and um, talks about microplastic, especially as a threat for male fertility. So I'm going to link that in here. And if you check out Chana Swan, I think she's a great author. She uh, has a book that came out and also, you know, she has a lot of articles. She did a lot of interviews. I think she's very interesting to listen to. And, um, you know, she gives some good advice on the whole issue. So ideally, let's cut out the plastic. That's one of the things that uh, causes disorders in our modern civilization. And I think it's something if we understand it, if we know where it is, we can avoid it and uh, become a lot healthier. Thank you.